Before we start, I want to do five claps. I'll do five more without Paul doing it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, my video should sync itself up in the program that I use, but if not, you see the, the waveforms and you put them together, and I didn't want to have two sounds going there and not seeing it right. I want to make sure that I get the right uh, sync up here, because i got two cameras running, so I want to make sure I get them both in. There we go. Yeah. There's <laughs> our pretty face, man. Look how we did that. Huh? Yeah. It was just a little applause for the two of you before we started. I think it's really the, what I was trying to do. Wonderful. We just kind of look like the bald Mickey Mouses, you know? Okay. Mickey Mice. <laughs> I've been called worse. Yeah. Mickey Mice. Mm -hmm. What do you call the computer mouse when you have more than one? Is that mice? I guess Plural is, is mice. Plural is mice, even yeah. if it's a computer mouse. Yeah. Right. That's what I've been told. It just sounds weird. Whatever. Guest, sound guy, everything. I'm sound tech, guest, the whole it's good. good. That's <laughs> nothing wrong. Um, you know? We're allowed to have to invoke If the bishop yeah, invocation, I'm doing the whole, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think I'm doing my own video here, huh? No one wears one hat. Uh -huh. You got it. Mm -hmm. Are we all set? Um, you know what? Just give me 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and Paul. What what am I? Um, what's the real quick tag for you? Um, in terms of um, position, job, uh, movement. Uh, let's see, uh, movement. Call it the Movement Institute with K Best Technologies. K dash best dot com. Do you um, like Paul John Don or just Paul Don? Paul. Best technologies, right? Yeah. All right. Timmy, I am ready when you are. Okay. You'll point to me when to begin the. Uh... Stay by, everybody. Welcome to Kachina Chatter because great conversations take place in the kitchen. Nella Kachina. Hi, I'm Lorraine Renali. Glad to have you along. And I have two guests in studio today. And we always start every show as we try to start our meals around the table. This is the virtual kitchen table with invocation. So I'm going to invoke my guests. Let me tell you who they are first. Paul Don of Movement Institute with KVest Technology and Charles Seymour, Charlie. Charlie, Charlie Seymour Jr. Charlie is Seymour Jr. to be exact with yeah, DevilTopDocLegends.com and CreateYourOwnLegendNow.com. He's also the author of Hey You, Don't Stand Out, Get Out. So, um, would, would either of you guys like to uh, start our show off with invocation, Paul? Please, that'd be wonderful. Okay. Heavenly Father, in the year 2012, we have a lot to be thankful for. May we be vehicles in your plan, your overall plan, and we may submit to a higher power. And allow us to say things that are to your blessing today and hold back those things that we shouldn't. Mm. Amen. 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 But hey, that's what Talk Radio is all about. We're in the kitchen. We're in the kitchen, and anything goes. There's one subject at my kitchen table that we don't discuss. And that is? You want to take a stab? I don't know that I've ever revealed this on the air. Go ahead. Here we go. You don't know? You have no idea? We, we've already talked religion. We've talked sex. we talked money. You can't talk about bugs around food with me. Just can't have that subject. Any so specific uh, there, there, just don't even they, they, yeah, generally. There there are specifics, but let's not even get into that. I'm Never comes up in my family. There either. you go. There yeah. you go. Not around the dinner table. Yeah. I skeeve, you know what Everything I'm saying? But the bug <laughs> thing though, huh? Everything you know, computer bugs as we were talking about off air, yes. fine. Viruses, that kind of thing, you know. But the real thing, oh, my daughter did that just the other night. Oh, you should see what they were doing on Fear. It was Fear Factor or one of those shows. Ridiculous. Cut and handle it. I can't stomach it. Okay, enough said. Let's move on. So the reason I have you two, these guys are local uh, from the Philadelphia area. And I've known uh, Paul for a lot of years and Charlie for quite a few now. They rack up pretty fast. They do rack up fast. I don't know where they all I think went. it's at least five years since. You, you haven't gotten any older, but clearly I have. Yeah, right. So, well, that's know. very kind of you. That's yeah, why I Charlie. love radio, theater of the mind. Of course, Charlie does have a couple of video cameras going here. so Always have video going. Um, because that's what you do. Yeah, that's right. But <laughs> I, and, uh, one thing that you two have in common, and this is why I kind of paired you up today, to me, you are the epitome of serial entrepreneur, entrepreneurism, entrepreneurship, and uh, always with ideas 
two high energy guys that I love talking to and uh, things bounce back and forth and amazing how you're both always reinventing yourselves, always coming up with new ideas and clever ideas. So I was hoping you could share some of this with my listeners because, you know, I think people in general are held back by fear. If that's no secret, people have written about that for years. Psychologists have, can do numbers on that. Um, but I also think in this day and age when there's so much negativity out there, every time you turn on the news, you talk to people, there's no jobs, there's no money, the economy's bad. And this has been going on for, long, for a longer period than I ever remember in my lifetime. You know, maybe that lends to my young age. I don't know. But uh, do you see that as well? either of you? Well, first of all, I'm glad that she wanted to talk to us about entrepreneurship and not that we were the two bald guys coming on here today. So at least... I agree. Again, you know, radio, radio is theater of yeah, mind, you there, know? There, so. there, there it is. But yeah, you know... I, Face for radio. I, I, I had a buddy from somewhere in the Midwest on Facebook the other day uh, want to talk about uh, motivation and mm -hmm. what motivates you. And he and a lot of other people that were there were talking about, oh, buying this thing or... Do I thought, no, motivation is purely internal for me. Right. You know, so changing yourself, you and I were talking again before we went on the air, that um, most of what we do in our businesses are like a round building, mm -hmm. and 95% of what we do on the inside is exactly the same. Right. So one of the hats that I've wore was as a photographer, and I can't say to somebody I'm the best bar mitzvah photographer if she's looking for the best wedding photographer, mm -hmm. even though what I do is the same on the inside. So the doorways around the round building have got to have different signs over them to attract the people. In the vestibule, we talk what makes sense to that person, mm -hmm. and then we do what we do primarily. Right. So even though I, I would agree with you, I've reinvented myself many times, it's just to go to a different doorway mm -hmm. because I'm a marketer, mm -hmm. I'm a storyteller, mm -hmm. I'm a business builder, mm -hmm. and this is how I work on that sort of thing. Char like Charlie has a huge successful real estate career behind him too. Your resume is just amazing. Well, it was a, about a quarter of a billion dollars worth of real estate, but it's you know, not just in our pretty face. No, <laughs> he's, but you know, it, it's interesting because I said to my younger daughter the other day uh, about what I'm doing now with Dr. Mark Kosman. Um, I said, you know, this is the most exciting work I've ever done. And mm -hmm. what she said was, Dad, it's always the most exciting work right. you've ever done, or you change it. That's right. And it was a great reflection yes. coming from somebody and, else and to feel that. And how about that she picked that up? That she picked that's it up. That's a good lesson. And that's what yeah. I hope to impart on, uh, to, to listeners. And Paul, let's talk about some of the things that you've done in your lifetime. Every, and you know, like Charlie said, everything you've done has some relationship to fitness. That's been your passion. Right. Since I've known you, you've all, all, the owner of Gold uh, Gym franchise. You've branched out into yoga, and you're working on a new technology, this K vest. And I saw a little bit online at your website. Incredible. Yeah, it really is. It's changed. I, th I would tell people mostly I've followed my curiosity. When you follow your curiosity, serendipity occurs through mm. alliances and such. So over the course of time, um, I think a lot of people when they go to school, they have a very my myopic view on um, if they go to school, they get their degree, and then mm. they up into a job when there's really a lot of different types of things that they can do to, be, to su sort of um, collate more uh, skill sets, if you will. Mm -hmm. And when you do that and you follow your curiosity, it's, it, you're coming from a passion-based perspective. You're not coming from, oh, I need to go in there and need to clock, uh, punch a clock and such. Right. With the change of economy, um, you're seeing a lot of uh, right brain thinking, which is a lot of experiential thinking. Mm -hmm. And the big market's going to be the 1946 and 1964 baby boomers, 77 million people. And uh, they need services, and they, 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 they want to live better, they want to feel better. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's been my main focus. And, and you want to tell everybody a little bit about KVEST and what exactly that technology is? Yeah, what well, got me interested, and in, I started to um, teach yoga, then take yoga in 1997. I started Power Yoga Works with a gentleman named Baron Baptiste. And uh, it sort of um, brought me to the conclusion that function follows form. And a lot of the movements that Ooh, people do recurrently are giving them pain. So about a year and a half ago, uh, I worked with a gentleman named uh, David Ostrom, who's uh, a company called Body Balance, and to give you the bridge version. He was working with a diagnostic tool that was allowing him to see where the breakdown was in a golf swing. Mm -hmm. So uh, I contacted the company. I'm doing a joint venture with KVEST Technologies out of New Hampshire. And we're going to uh, be putting in and licensing uh, the technology to health clubs. So when you go to a health club, you can see where your pain's originating from, where you can create that greater efficiencies. And uh, that's going to be a, a new launch in 2012 uh, with my uh, partnership with KVEST. That sounds, yeah, and I saw that um, uh, 
it just it's amazing. I mean, what kind of equipment is necessary? Because when I looked online, it looks like they have a, a video camera, and it all I don't know. It's it almost looks three D. They show you how you're moving. The, the example was with the with a golfer, right. and uh, incredible. Yeah, it's going to be different. It's going to be more so more you're specific. Really, really. I mean, it's it's almost like a quarterback at, on Monday morning watching the tapes over and over. You know, to see exactly which move and which. And and this will help the generation you talk about how it will generate it will help uh, help everybody yeah. realistically the general but mostly the baby boomer a lot of the issues they're having with pain is due to the fact of how they've been moving recurrently function always follows form that's a precept mm -hmm. so when you can diagnose and specifically see where they're breaking down sequentially you can go that to that problem so they may have an issue with that fascia or binding in their tissue or they may go uh, from a different place of how they're moving incorrectly uh, how they're feet are positioned and such. So it will really allow us to be able to create greater efficiencies for maybe a runner. A runner would want to come and sure. see specifically how their gait is and such. So it's really a solution center, not unlike what uh, Steve Jobs did with Apple Computer. It's sure. not going to be just one technology. It's going to be a lot of different components. And it's something that, even though it was thought about maybe years ago, wasn't as easy to I, if I use the word diagnose or recognize because the technology wasn't there yeah, and it is now. And the cognitive factor. You see a lot of when you go to the mall, you see the Xbox and you're playing tennis uh, against a uh, viral right. Andre Agassi. So, the, so uh, the, the cognitive factor is a stickiness factor to it, if you will. So we're going to be doing a uh, initial site at Sweat Fitness, uh, a partner of mine named Scott Kaplan. Mm -hmm. and, uh, when will this all launch? Exciting. We're in the process now. We're going through the due diligence and such and rise dot and I's and crossing T's and incorporating a Delaware and uh, we should be in the theater near you soon. Sweatfitness.com. Sweatfitness.com. Very cool. Charlie, what do you think about all well, this? Well, I, I think it's it's fascinating and Paul, because that isn't my area of expertise, but, mm -hmm. but Paul mentioned something early on that I wanted to get back to and he was talking about uh, people not just going and getting, getting out of school and then going and getting a job. Mm -hmm. We really are very factory mentality still. To, these, yeah. to this day, mm -hmm. the um, sequential almost, and and just going and working for somebody else. Mm. Even the professionals are tr being trained to go work for somebody else, mm -hmm. and we don't have to do that. So that when an economy changes, when somebody says, "Oh, the government's not helping me do the," oh. you know, let's go off and do this for ourselves. Yeah, we but don't it's a, it's want a, them to help. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> a different strange. personality, no question about. It. My father was a real estate appraiser for years mm -hmm. and did appraisals all over the world. But he expected that paycheck every week, right, right? right? I sold investment real estate. I knew that I could work, and I did, for the Curtis Center, for instance, in, in Center City, Philadelphia, mm -hmm. across from Independence Hall, for three and a half years before it sold. Wow. But I knew the payoff was going to be huge. And right. in 1984, it was $625,000. Wow. Because I knew I could then spend that kind of time doing it. But I learned another lesson in that building, because it's the Curtis Center is the home of Saturday Evening Post, Jack mm -hmm. and Jill, Holiday Magazine, that sort of thing, where they had great big floors and they had these little stages where the managers were. And the managers would be raised up looking over their employees, like they're all little cogs in the wheel and they've got to tweak them and, you know, they're not going to work right if I don't get out there and tell them yeah, what to do. Yeah. Well, but that's just totally the opposite for the entrepreneur. I don't need anybody to get me up in the morning. Yeah. I don't need an alarm clock to get me up right. either, but I don't need anybody else to tell me what to do. The opportunities are too great for me. It's really honing them down. Yeah, exactly, right? and choosing the right one, choosing the one that's the right not going to waste your time. I deal with that myself. To you work know? on, yeah. 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 And so Paul's doing the same thing. He's being the entrepreneur as I am to go out there and do the things that really... I mean, let me uh, create a little visual for either of you. If, if somebody had to inflict punishment on you, I would imagine saying to you nine to five in this building every day for x amount of months would that just freak you out would that be the worst yeah. you'd make it work for you somehow yes it would be terrible wouldn't yes it? yes I, I'm not terrible i i you know something i just over the course of time and again i go back to the curiosity and the passion when you do something that you're passionate about it just comes from it's organic uh -huh. it's not it's you're, you're not trying to study something to get something you're not regurgitating something to get an outcome 
you're, you're coming from an organic position. You see it. You, you, you read about it. You, you grow with it. You, 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 you care about it. And Steve Jobs would say a lot of the jobs, a lot of the sales and marketing, they're, they're, they're driving companies, but the product isn't driving the company. So I really get into that. I love the product. I love to help people. I love to give people a sense that So wait, you said the, that the product didn't drive the company, the sales and the marketing. The sales and marketing. You see a lot of yeah, that now. But people oh, see yeah. through yeah. that. Eventually it crashes and burns. Yeah, absolutely. The best marketing is viral marketing. I do something for you. You get healed or you, 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 you get something that you feel changed your life and you go tell someone. That's mm -hmm. marketing. Everything mm -hmm. else is white noise. So everybody else wants to know how to viral and get on there. And right. send it. It's all white noise. Bottom line is deliver something that people find of value. Keep on doing it consistently. That's what we try to do here. Yeah, man. You do there you right. go. You <laughs> no, do. really, I do. I yeah. try to do that. You do. Mm -hmm. you I, I want to have good people in, and I, I want to give the listeners something that, they, that they're getting. You know, there is a lot of white noise out there, even in broadcasting. Well, and it's interesting that, that you ask about, you know, going to a nine to five yeah. job. I, li I, I worked downtown Philadelphia for 13 years. Right. Haven't been there since 1991, but I did do 13 years there. And I woke up one morning in a cold sweat. Good. That I had parked across the street from an office building, walked across the street, taken it up to the eleventh floor, and had to go work in my cubicle. And I literally woke up and said, "There's just no friggin' way I'm ever going to do that, right? Just not but something that works for me." How about that? How about at the time in, in your life, Charlie? Your kids are grown. When you have that pressure, I have to do this every day. I have kids to feed. How how do you address that fear in people? You know, I, I hear what Paul and and Charlie are saying and. And I'd love to be able to do that, but you know, what if I don't have that, that check every week? Because most of us do. Start part-time. Gotcha. Start part-time. Mm -hmm. Those that are really successful um, spend less time in front of the television, mm -hmm. just relaxing, yeah. less time just fooling around, right. and they find something to start with, yeah. some small thing, and get it moving, and then keep growing with that. That's how we all go. And if you do something that you love, as Paul said, as right. Confucius say, you never work a day in your life, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and also, yeah, yeah. I was very um, blessed by having a great alliance. As my father's been a wonderful alliance. My father's been a wonderful alliance. You've had a supportive yeah, family. Absolutely, the supportive cast and people, yeah. and, and you work together. So, yeah. um, again, we, we, I'm blessed. Well, you know, a lot of people don't have that support from their families because maybe right. their families are too uh, afraid of something different. You know, I know my own family. It was, it I'm was, blessed. it was. Get the piece of paper and do this. And Lorraine, what do you mean you're going into radio? That was something out oh, of yeah. left field. You know, everybody else had these, you know, computer careers and 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 financial careers. And this. When are you going to stop I that and get a real sheet. job? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Forty six years old. That I don't think they get it yet. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but you then seek out the people that are going to be your support network and, and you and you and affiliate in essence with they're to give you the platform to allow to heal people yeah. so in essence if you can create a mastermind alliance not unlike the amish right the amish have it right they go out they build a house they come back they always eat they don't they, there's no hierarchy to it there's a sense of uh, community there's a sense of love there's mm -hmm. a sense of uh, have uh, good energy if you will good energy god energy however you want to phrase it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and going on what you were just saying there as well uh, i love the expression that you are the average of the five people you spend most yes. time with yes right Amen. Yes. so Amen. i'm in front of the room one time giving a talk to a dan kennedy group and i start scratching my ear and licking my paw because i spend most of my time with the cat and the dog uh. but <laughs> if you, you know, that was that was at least one of the talks that I gave. But if you spend time with billionaires, your thought is going to be very different yes. from spending time with your child that you're changing the diaper. I'm not saying that's not important work to sure. do. Uh, now, as a first-time grandfather, I love changing the diapers and helping my grandson. But it's your mental set and mm -hmm. where you are thinking and where the possibilities are. We don't see the roadblocks. You know, I learned from my business partner years ago. He rides a motorcycle. He said, Charlie, we're taught as soon as we start with motorcycles, you don't look at the pothole in front of you, you look out much further. Right. Because if you're staring at the pothole, you drive into the pothole. Oh, sure. And isn't that true in life? Yeah. It's your lens. It's your lens. lens. Yeah. I love it. Paradigm. Mm -hmm. All right. We, um, we're going to continue with uh, Charlie Seymour and Paul Dunn. And uh, let me give, I didn't even give the, the, uh, the background, the full background. Um, we'll give a little bit of history here. Uh, as I said, Paul's been in fitness uh, over 26 years. You have a year, but I bet it's even longer than that. He's pretty fit. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, serial entrepreneur and, uh, and sweatfitness.com is the new website. Movement Institute, he's working with KVEST Technologies. And then Charlie Seymour uh, has a background in theater, business, marketing, uh, author of Hey You, Don't Stand Out, Get Out. 
And dentaltopdoclegends.com is the is the new door in the circular building, Thank which you. the circular building being createyourownlegendnow.com. Yep. You work with, um, uh, as you said, Dr. Mark Hosman, the motorcyclist. The motorcyclist, the psychologist, the entrepreneur. He calls himself as an entrepreneurial psychologist, which is different. That in itself, I love that he came well, out, coined his own term. That's right, it, because it says something about you're not just going to hang the shingle out and expect people to come to you, which right. a lot of people are doing yes. in whatever their businesses yes, are. They are. You have to be proactive in what you're doing and setting things up and the way you're going to approach your business and your marketing and telling people. And there's a lot of good stuff going on out there these days. You have to be open to it and you have to recognize it. Yeah. Opportunity uh, doesn't come to you. And I find it funny. I've heard entrepreneurial entrepreneurs say, or people that start businesses, maybe they don't have, maybe they shouldn't be called entrepreneurs because, like you said, they think they're going to hang the shingle out, people are going to come. And uh, I heard somebody recently say, oh, I have to work every weekend. Well, tell me a business owner that does it. Yeah. You, know, you need to love it. It needs to be your passion. You need to understand. You got to get rid of that mindset that we had, like you mentioned, that was you do this, you do the nine to five, you have your Saturday and Sunday off. That goes out the window. It's a whole new uh, playing field. One of the things, yes, one of the things that we coach people on doing is not trading their time for an hourly fee. Mm. So a doctor, a dentist, a candlestick maker, they're really trading one hour for yes. one hourly fee. Yes. So that we want to trade our knowledge sure. for those fees. So when we're creating information products, recordings, uh, videos, mm -hmm. books, mm -hmm. you know, the rock star goes into the recording studio, works really hard, mm -hmm. records the CD, records the MP3s, and is paid over and over and over again every time it plays on the radio. It doesn't show up into your home to sing that every time, right? right? Mm -hmm. So this is one of the mindset changes for the professionals that are open to it to say, there's another way for you. Because they hit the ceiling. They have no more hours. In fact, they want some of those hours back. Right. They can't charge anymore, either insurance rates won't let mm -hmm. them or the guy down the street is half what they are so they're already lucky that they're mm -hmm. getting that. Mm -hmm. So how else are they going to make some money to do this and there's a whole other way of doing it and that's one of the things that we do at createyourownlegendnow.com is We'll get into some that. of that and Good. some more. Um, we're going to take a quick break here on Kachina Chatter. When we come back, we're going to go uh, round rob and we'll head to writer's block, get the Ronda file, see what uh, our chef Jackie's doing at Taste for Travel all next on Kachina Chatter.